Howdy, it's Ashley Keller Williams Real Estate in Everett here bringing you a monthly update. Um, we're going to revisit the numbers that happened in August of 2021. And we're going to just kind of get a checkup on see what the market is doing. I mean, I think most people know by now that it's been a very strong seller's market for a while. So we're going to kind of see how it turned out here in North Everett. Stay tuned. All right, let's get to the data. Let's get to the data. All right, so um, we're looking at last month's numbers. Um, this first slide is looking at all of Everett and comparing last August to this current August. And you know, look, I mean, it looks like it's about the same levels, you know, like the new listings are slightly lower. I mean, I don't know if that's a significant difference. Pending sales are like nearly identical, right? We're at 293 from last year, uh, sorry, 292 from last year and 293 this year. Um, the big winner here is this median sales prices. I mean, I think it's probably not a surprise that the prices are going up, but I mean, look at that. It's up like almost a hundred thousand dollars. You know, it's up almost a hundred thousand dollars from 498. From 498,000 to 585, 500,000. Um, and then days on market is flat. So, I mean, yes, we knew prices were going to go up. I think we've been talking about this the entire time. I mean, I think if we go back and look at um, uh, videos when we were kind of at the beginning of the pandemic, you know, like March 2020 and kind of like, oh, what's going to happen? I think I think we have, you know, gone beyond you know, that V-shape recovery. I mean, I think we've kind of bounced, we've rebounded it, you know, I think beyond what most buyers were hoping for. I think sellers are probably pretty happy right now, obviously. On to the next slide. Um, you know, are we on track as far as, um, you know, year to date on the number of home sales in North Everett? You know, that's where we're going to start. We're going to look at North Everett here. And, you know, we're right now we're like at, 297 sold homes. Um, you know, we're only about 100 homes away from hitting what we did in 2020. And I do think we're on track to hit at least 400 sales this year. I mean, we're going right now into the, into the, into the last quarter, going into the fourth quarter. And I mean, it feels like it's slowing down a little bit. You know, it feels like it's slowing down, but, you know, we have a couple of things happening, right? We have uh, the ending of the, the forbearance period on mortgages, right? So, you know, we might have a couple of foreclosures come on or people that are kind of like, hey, you know, here's the thing. They're not going to be foreclosed. The, the thing is, is that most people that are in that position where they may have to foreclose, they usually have a substantial equity in their home. So likely they would just come to market and sell it. And if they came to market and sold it, we have so much buyer demand that it's, you know, you know, when I say, hey, foreclosures are going to come to the market or people that are like, you know, having some kind of distress or they need to get their home sold, you know, they're not, you know, we're not going to have like screaming deals in my opinion. You know, I think, I think we have so much buyer demand right now that if we have any additional inventory, it would just provide some relief to the people that have been writing offers all year long and getting beat in multiple offer situations where you get 14, 15, 20, 30 offers on one property, right? So, you know, the one thing that may play in the advantage of the buyer that kind of hangs in is that typically during this time of year, we have a little bit of a lull, right? So, you know, going into the fourth quarter, we're going into the holidays. And typically what happens in the holidays is, is people go do holidays, right? They go do Thanksgiving, they go do Christmas, they stop buying houses. And so maybe there'd be less competition, but I do still think that there will be some, some competition for sure. All right. So we can kind of see, you know, the previous slides kind of playing into the specifics of 98201, this North Everett, when we compare August, 2020 to August, 2021. And you can see, you know, in 2021 here, we're up right? We have more new listings. We have more pending properties. We have more sold properties and, you know, oddly less homes for sale on the market. I mean, they're still getting eaten up. You know, buyer demand is real. It is real, real, real. And you can really see the velocity of this. So, so you can see, it's interesting to look at this. We've got more new listings, more pending and more sold. So all of those are increased. And then when you get over to the other side here and you look at homes for sale, days on market and market supply, you can really see the speed of the market, right? Because homes available for sale is lower than it was in 2020. 
And then the days on market is lower, right? So days on market, I mean, they're still moving very quickly. And then you can see the month supply, which is kind of like a, a combination really kind of like speaks to the velocity and the speed of the market. Month supply is down. It is down, down, down. All right, we're gonna look at the median sales price. You know, this, this happened in, um, in all of Everett, right? We had a nice increase. And you can see here, looking in North Everett, that that increase was also affected. You know, happened in North Everett as well. We're a 13.3% increase comparing last August to this August. And year-to-date prices, interestingly enough, are up 22.6%. 22.6%. Woo! It's good. So great news for folks that are looking to sell and maybe not so great news for buyers. You know, it sort of depends on what kind of buyer you are. If you've been waiting for the market to slow down and you've been waiting to try to find a deal, I think that that's terrible news. 22.6% increase. And, and I think even more, unfortunately, like I don't see these prices going away. They're not going down. We're going to continue to have um, gains into next year as well. All right, let's look at the trend line. So I have, gosh, it's almost, you know, I've got more than two years of data here. And uh, you can see, I mean, there was a time back in February, 2019, where the median sales price was like under 400,000. I mean, there were a couple months, look at that April, 2019, 350. And now you fast forward, fast forward to August, 2021, you know, the last few months and we're, well over $500,000 is the median sales price. And, you know, I've really kind of, you know, here's the question. As we, you know, as we go into like, you know, the season, the seasonal high, it looks like it hit in May, right? We had that seasonal high in May this year. And, you know, we typically have a, uh, uh, a seasonal fluctuation, right? Where, you know, we kind of get those highs in like, sort of like that late spring, early summer, which you can see here. And then we start to see little decreases and then it kind of drops down through the holiday and drops through winter. And then we kind of go back up in spring. And here's the question. Will we keep seeing that? Um, next slide. I have long, long predicted that median sales prices would eventually go over 450,000. And here we are, April, May, June, July, August, likely September. Um, all over 450,000. And, you know, honestly, they've gone even higher than I would have anticipated. I mean, they're definitely clearly in the $500,000 range. And, you know, I don't know, what's the cool weather going to do? What's the cool weather coupled with increasing interest rates going to do? Are we going to fall back to the fours or are we going to hold for the median sales prices? You know, I don't know. We'll just have to see. I mean, if I had to predict right now, I think I think we're going to hold, you know, we may have a, a slight dip, but I don't think we're going to drop below 450. All right. I love this graph. It kind of gives you an idea of like what the competition level is like. And you can see, like, there's always been competition. You know, I, I've been a real estate agent now for several years, and there's always been competition up here in the North Everett area. And you can just see, you know, going from 2019 to, to current day, 2021, the competition has just been slowly, slowly inching up. And, you know, one of the ways to measure that is, is looking at the percent of list price received. Um, you know, we did have a little bit, it seems like a little bit less competition in August. And I think many people who were in the market at that point, you know, it felt like we had a little bit of a slowdown. I think, I think it was kind of like, you know, maybe a little bit of like, you know, here's for context, what happened is, is we kind of opened up the city, right? Um, because of COVID. And I think people were like, you know, saying like, all right, time to go on vacation. Let's get out of here. So they weren't really shopping for houses. Um, then we kind of closed it back up. Then the kids went to school and all that stuff. And so, you know, maybe that's why we saw that drop. You know, we had, um, we had the seasonal peak, which was at 10.4% over asking. And now we're, we've dropped down to about 5% over asking, you know, will it hold there? Will it drop down to you know, pre-pandemic levels, right? Will it, you know, I'm not sure. You look at those pre-pandemic levels, you know, we were kind of like maybe one, one and a half, uh, you know, maybe two or 3% over asking. 
I mean, you can see that December of 2019, we were like under asking price, right? I, you know, I'm not, I'm honestly not hopeful. I think if you're watching this as a buyer and you're hoping to prepare for like what the market's like, I would prepare to expect, I would prepare to pay like, you know, at least 3% over asking on average. So on average, you know, that's kind of a range. I have a, I had a listing up here that I just closed that sold for like 20 plus percent over asking. So those are still out there. Those are happening. So yeah, I mean, it's intense. The market, like this looks like we're having a little bit of a decline, but once the word gets out that there's a little teeny decline, all the buyers are going to come out and try to buy. Right. So, you know, there's a window right now, there's a window, but you have to be able to see it and you have to be able to be like, okay, boom, I've identified a window and I'm going to hit it right now, you know, because it's just a matter of time. It's going to go away. All right, last slide. I have been tracking this all year. You know, it's my favorite slide. It's one of my favorites. Um, and the reason I've been tracking this is because this is the most requested property I get. Whenever I talk to somebody, they want a three bed, two bath house. Like I literally today got off the phone with somebody that was like, hey, I'm looking for a three bed, two bath. Um, it's very popular. And so I've been tracking, I've been tracking the cost and availability because I think people kind of come up to Everett. They think they can get a three bed, two bath for like 300,000. And it's like, I don't know how to say this to them, but let's, I'll just give you the breakdown. Look, all right. In May of 2021, the cost, this is the average cost was $577,500 in June, $565,000 in July. 532,500. And then here we are last month, $551,000 average price. And let me tell you this, if, if you're paying less than the average price, it means you might be sacrificing updates, right? So you're going to have maybe fewer updates, right? Um, you know, maybe more deferred maintenance to deal with. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, I just don't see these uh, dropping down into like, you know, you know, pandemic. Well, I mean, even, you know, they were, they were kind of like in the, in the low to mid fours kind of during, during last year, the end of last year. And I just, man, I'm not sure that I see that number going that way. Um, that second bathroom is very valuable. It's very valuable. That second bathroom. Well, look, that's the end of the data. All right. So look, you've seen the numbers now. All right. I mean, it's great for sellers, maybe not so great for buyers. Um, you know, overall, I think things are it's still a very strong market, you know, especially for selling a property. I mean, most houses are not staying on the market very long. Zillow projects that in this area, we're going to have a 10.1% increase in prices over the next year. I mean, you know, the year to date number is pretty big, 22.6% 20, right now. So I think that will continue on. We'll see what happens, right? Like I keep hearing that interest rates are going to kind of slowly creep up. So we'll just see how things go. Um, this is Ashley Bolton signing off. See you guys again soon.